My name is Richard Zayer. I'm in the Department of Chemistry at Stanford University. I also have a courtesy appointment in the Department of Physics, and I find myself increasingly looking at biological problems. You were in love with science already when you were a little child. You were once saying, I don't know what you have done, but you got spanking from your father. Well, my first chemistry experiments uh, were probably done at around age three or four. The experiments were uh, perhaps inadvertent, not, not planned. I received a spanking and I was unhappy about that, so I went and urinated in his aquarium that contained tropical fish. This actually ended up killing the tropical fish, which led to another spanking. But I was immediately impressed with the power of chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> so in a certain way, the rebellion continued through the whole years. Why did you have this attitude? I think it came in part from being in a Jewish background. I grew up in a community that was like 95% Jewish at the time. I was told that there were these other people uh, Christians who believed in Santa Claus, but it wasn't true. And there was all types of stuff of this sort. And so I began very much early on to doubt what people told you was being so, is was it so? And then my family had to leave that community and go to another community in which we were the only Jewish family in a Christian community. And I remember I, I, I was put into third grade. The class was singing Christmas carols. And the teacher asked me why I wasn't singing. And I said that I wasn't singing because I, I didn't know the words, and moreover, they were false. And this caused me to be put into the corner and to wear a dunce cap. And then later on, my classmates beat me up. This is actually a very traumatic event. It led very much to, a, to my feelings of, of deep skepticism about everything. And you know, in science and research, it's very important to both believe and disbelieve at the same time. I've actually argued that one of the the characteristics that you want to be as a contented schizophrenic. Because you have to put forward an idea and believe in it, but as soon as you put forward that idea, you question, is it really true? Is it true for everything? For what things? And, and so forth. And I think that that's part of the pro way you make progress in science. Finally, 1977, yeah. you find your home in Stanford. Your focus was to develop laser in Induced fluorescence. Fluorescence. It's a very diverse field. When lasers were first developed, I early on thought it would be very nice to shine this light on molecules. And when you tune the light, you could excite the molecule. Once the molecule was in this excited state, quivering, <laughs> it would give off light and you'd get a spectrum, a fluorescence spectrum. It's allowed us to actually do sequencing of the human genome. It started with that way. And we have other experiments in which we are trying to determine the difference between cancer and normal in, in tissues. We have other experiments in which we're trying to release drugs from nanoparticles and implant them in people. But yeah. if you don't succeed or you sometimes... Uh, most of the time we don't succeed. What are you talking about? <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> and let me tell you, the, the attitude you need very much is to let failure guide you to success. And if you don't fail enough times, you can't possibly succeed. Somebody was writing that you have still the excitement of a child. Oh, uh, that's another thing I would tell you, if I might. If you know the, the fairy tale about Peter Pan. Yes. Uh, Peter Pan was right. Don't grow up. Okay. <laughs> Always be a child. Now, I'm not saying be childish, I'm saying be childlike. People were born with a sense of wonder and curiosity. Don't lose it, even though parents will, quit, will tell you <laughs> to stop asking me why. <laughs> Go ahead and continue to ask why <laughs> and explore things. It's great fun.